Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make an RPG in Unity and welcome to episode 31. In this tutorial we're going to carry on with our little pause menu, the whole inventory thing we've got going on, and we're going to create a button on there to close it rather than press uh, escape. We'll add some information on there like our quest and we'll also add data that's relevant to our world onto there as well, so it'll feed from the script that we've already written. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial in this series and everything else on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, let's go to our canvas first off, and let's actually set back on the inventory menu right there, so we can actually work with it. So, what I would like to try and get to the uh, point of here is, for now, we're going to deal with our stats menu and also... Uh, the menu itself because I think that one of the last things I said on the last tutorial we're going to deal with uh, what the gold thing says because the gold display right there if I turn the inventory menu off uh, is currently just on the actual well background itself and we don't want it there we only want it in our inventory menu so if we turn that inventory menu back on and we can actually go to let's replace it down here Let's place it down here. So let's take gold display and place it inside inventory menu. And let's re-anchor it down the bottom. In fact, we'll do middle because we'll have a close button down here. So let's have it in the middle and then let's reposition it uh, using our rec tool. And let's have it about there. So that will only display now as long as we have our inventory open. So that frees up a little bit of room mainly at the top. So there we go, gold. And again, it's all about, you know, making it look how you want it to look. There's no set way. It's how you want your game to look in the end. So next, let's create that close button. So turning the inventory back on again, I'm going to duplicate uh, the item button right there. So hold control, press D to duplicate, rename it to close button. If I spell button right, button doesn't have a P. It's a bit of a typo there. You'd be surprised how many uh, typos can actually occur in coding and whatever else, and it causes havoc. So let's anchor this one to the bottom right, and then let's move it into position to the bottom right, about there. And I'm going to have it just basically say close. And all we really need to do at this point, <clears throat> excuse me, is to use the code we already have to turn it off. So. If we go to the actual script where uh, it's in global stats object right there and it is inventory menu script so if we go into this here all we need to do is add in an extra method to basically close the inventory and yes i know the escape button does that but that does it inside the uh, pausing menu but we can also do it from this section right here so basically what we can do to make things a little bit easier is if we go to our pause i think it's menu control is it it's not menu control it's pausing isn't it so if i can remember where i actually had the script here's an idea let's search so let's go to our search bar here and type pause why don't we just have pause back gosh i can't remember what script i used it's been a while since i've uh, been doing this isn't it i think it's gonna be something I can't remember. Okay. In fact, where is it? I cannot remember where it is. Is it inventory menu? It is inventory menu. There we go. So I was right. I was right. Um, so yeah, basically this whole menu control is for the main menu, wasn't it? It's inventory menu that we want. And I think after all that, it was actually on the um, object that we needed on global stat object inventory menu it was. So we can do all of this inside the same menu. So let's create that extra method. Public void close menu, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And all we really have to do here is because this is going to be the same as pressing the cancel button, the escape button, once again, we can actually take this line of code in the else section of what we typed um, before, and we can place it just here and save the script. So heading back into Unity, we just need to reassign that method to the close button. So 
down here let's change inventory menu and it's going to be close menu and let's just make sure this works so let's press play let's get onto our inventory and then let's close if it lets me there we go so the close button works so we can use cancel and we can click close and i think while i'm at it i'm actually going to change that to a red color just kind of give it a little bit of something else there so i'm going to save my scene because i'm happy with what we've done there right so next thing to do is let's feed some information into our inventory so let's turn it on and by default we're going to go to our quest panel so i'm going to turn off item panel i'm going to turn on quest panel and within here I am going to have some text to basically is going to be static and it's going to say simply something like, um, gosh, I don't know, uh, main quest, side quest. So we'll have a list of main quest, or rather just have the main quest here, then a list of side quests here when we get around to creating side quests. So on that, then I'm going to take this right here, uh, hold control, press D, and this is going to be our title for quests. So we're going to anchor this to the top left and I'm going to align it also to top left and we'll have this say main quest with a colon and I'm also going to make it bigger so let's have it as 30 and increase that probably bold as well and I'm going to f2 to rename and call it main text I'm going to hold control press d duplicate bring it to about here and I'm just going to have this as side text. And then obviously just change this to side quests. So at this point, this is where we have to give each of our quests kind of a name. Um, but what I think I'll do as well is I'll put a little split here because I want some information on the quest right here. And I'm going to use to make things a little bit simple as it were i'm going to use buttons as the way of selecting quests because that way at least for now it gives us an opportunity to kind of control what we're doing in a controlled environment and there is plenty of room for advancement later on don't you know don't try and go straight into something really complicated really advanced especially if you are a beginner at this point we're not really beginners anymore but it's still nice to kind of build upon what we're doing rather than jumping in the deep end so let's start with uh, going to UI and let's have just a raw image and we can manipulate a raw image to be pretty much anything we want. So I'm going to have this here. I'm going to shrink it. Uh, in fact, I'll probably zoom in a little and move it over some more because I'm not happy. I think it maybe should be there. And this is going to be my split down the middle. So I'll have it like that. And I'll shrink the width to about five. So over here, obviously, is going to be the text where we have some information about our quest. So let's now take this little split. Uh, rename. Let's have split uh, quest. It's just a bit of extra UI to give it a little bit of something else. Um, and now let's... Uh, how are we going to do this? So let's take this right here. Hold control, press D, bring it over here to probably about there. And increase the box size and let's anchor it middle right. Change the font size to not be bold and have it smaller. So let's have it as maybe 18. And let's have it blank for now. Uh, align center, I think, as well. So next thing we're going to do is let's have a button here which represents our main quest so i'm going to simply take the quest button hold control press d and then drag that onto the quest panel because all of what we're doing here remember is part of the quest panel and i'm going to f2 and rename this to main quest button and if i drag it into position here and change the text within that button to be aligned and also smaller let's have it also normal and let's have it as 24 and let's shrink the button just a little bit and i wonder what it's like if it's italic do you see what it's like yeah okay i think we'll go italic and i'm going to change the text to say nothing right now because no quest no nothing 
So I'm going to save what I've done here. And now we're going to feed information into this. Now, one thing we have to remember when feeding information into this particular um, sort of object that we have here, we have to make sure that we do um, actually create everything we need to create inside the original script where something occurs, i.e. we pick up that first quest. So we need to work with that script. So let me turn the inventory menu off for now. And let's find, let's zoom in on our necromancer here, the guy that walks around. And let's deal with this old thing. Yep, it's been a while since we've dealt with this thing right here. Uh, but what we need to do is work on the notice board actual, um, I forgot what it's called, <laughs> the trigger. You know what I mean. Uh, so I cannot remember what the object was that is on there. I think is it quest zero one notice, notice, trigger. That's the one. So this trigger is the one we're going to deal with. So we need to go into that quest zero zero one take. And essentially what we're going to do is create another script, which is going to hold all that quest information. So I think uh, we need like a master kind of um, quest script. Like I say, it's going to hold everything. So let's create a new C sharp script inside that quest folder. And let's just call it master quest. And if anyone gets that reference, speak up in the comments. So master quest is where we're going to reference uh, the objects that are created within that inventory menu. And because we're going to be using text, we have to add in using unity engine.ui semicolon. Uh, next thing we need to do is let's declare a couple of variables. So it's going to be public game object and it's going to be main quest text semicolon and public game object main quest I'll put desk short for description. So what do we do here? Well, we have to declare some strings now. So what's going to happen is the quests that we're going to do are going to feed into this and this is going to update our inventory menu in real time. But to do that, we need to go public static string and main um, quest and we'll just call it, what can we call it? Main quest name, semicolon, and then we'll have public static string and then main quest um, info, semicolon. So by that premise, what we have to do now is basically attach those strings to those game objects. So it's going to be main quest name dot get component sorry I'm actually uh, going a bit mad here main quest name no oh, I've done it again haven't I I meant to say main quest text I'm having a bad day guys bad day dot get component and it is text open close bracket dot text equals and we'll say main quest name semicolon and also we'll have main quest desk remember that short just short for description dot get component again it's the text in the spiky brackets open close bracket dot text equals main quest info semicolon and save. So the reason we do this is basically so we don't have to keep adding variables to every script that we have where we collect um, a quest. So all that means now is that if we go on to uh, the actual, in fact, should we do this all on one object? It's probably better that way. So quest manager, remember that's only relevant to the quests themselves this master quest is what controls the information that we feed into our inventory so we're going to have this master quest attached to quest manager that means that on our canvas we then have to feed these objects onto there so basically 
we have to attach text in the main quest button over here. There's main quest text. And I believe, hang on, I'm just going to turn all this back on just so I can remember what's what. Uh, so the main quest text one, I'm going to rename that to, uh, in fact, we'll just have a quest desk. So like I say, for now, we'll keep things neat and tidy. Um, so quest desk, that is going to be part of the, if I can find it again. I'm kind of a bit mad here, guys. I really am. Uh, so that's going to be onto there. Now, this is in its simplest terms how things are going to be done. And it's not technically right at the moment because when we get multiple quests, then that's when things will change. But this is the main way that we're going to feed things through. So quest 001, that's where we need to begin everything. So I'm going to turn the inventory menu off once again, close up my canvas and head to notice trigger. And remember, it's quest 001 take. So let's head into there. And we need to reference what we've just created. So we have to type here, master quest dot main quest name equals, and let's call this quest, just find the sword, I guess. Uh, semicolon and master quest dot main quest info equals I have to find the sword which is said to be inside can't spell is can I inside a chest not to deep in the forest. The reward for this seems to be 100 gold. Quote, semicolon, and save that script. Now, if everything goes to plan, this should feed straight into there, and we should be able to see it inside our inventory menu. So let's press play. And let's initially take a look at our inventory menu. So we're on quests by default. Yep, so you can see that's fine. But what I think I might do before we carry on is actually kind of place it as it should be because uh, I, I initially wanted the item menu to be the main one. So item comes back on, quest goes off, and then inventory menu goes off. And now we can do the final test for this. So into quests. And yep, that's all good. So let's take that quest. Accept the quest. And there we go, main quest. Find the sword. And I have to find the sword, which is said to be inside a chest, not too deep in the forest. The reward for this seems to be 100 gold. Now. As I've said multiple times, this is all down to you, how you want your game to look. I've done something very simple. You could go for the whole Skyrim look if you wanted. It's entirely up to you, you know, the whole black and whatever else going on. Uh, but this is basically how we're going to be able to feed things into our menu. So next tutorial, we're going to feed more information into our menu, uh, create more environment. Uh, so we'll start building an entrance to a cave section, because if you remember, our NPC here talks about a cave. Um, I think we'll add some sound effects to our sword and the gates as well because they're a little bit bland right now. So that's all coming up in the next tutorial. So guys, until that one, thank you very much for watching.